Welcome to Part History YouTube channel. Subscribe our channel for regular notification and follow our official Facebook page. Today we are going to discuss about the advent of iron and its implications. The most important achievement of the later Dark Ages was the shift from bronze to iron. Between 1050 and 800 BCE, iron technology was disseminated in Greece and Aegean. This period marks the transition to the Iron Age. The origins of iron technology are shrouded in mystery. However, the archaeological evidence which has accumulated over the years indicates that Anatolia and Northern Mesopotamia pioneered the use of this metal. The technology involved in making iron objects is much more complex than that of copper or bronze. It took some time to acquire proficiency in iron making. In West Asia and the Eastern Mediterranean, the introduction of iron was spread over many centuries from the 15th to the 8th centuries BCE. It is not possible to pinpoint one particular place where the technology was invented. It was earlier thought that the Hittites were the first people to use iron extensively, especially for military purposes, and that they kept this technology a closely guarded secret. The collapse of the Hittite Empire circa 1200 BCE and the tribal movements in Anatolia and the Eastern Mediterranean resulted in the transmission of iron techniques to new areas. Scholars no longer hold the view that the Hittites had a monopoly of this technology or that migrations by tribal groups carried knowledge of iron working to new areas. We know that iron was not completely unknown to West Asians, Egyptians and the Eastern Mediterranean world prior to 1200 BCE. Some familiarity with this metal had definitely been acquired between 2000 and 1500 BCE. A handful of small iron objects or fragments of the metal have been found at various sites spread over a wide belt in West Asia. After 1500 BCE, iron objects, though still rare, exhibit improved metallurgical skills an outstanding example is a dagger with an iron blade buried with the remains of the pharaoh Tutankhamun. Time is 1350 BCE. Although there is still a lot of difference of opinion among historians over the question of whether copper and bronze technology could have directly led to iron making, it cannot be denied that copper and bronze metallurgy led to advances in pyrotechnology, the technology of regulating fire and heat, attaining, controlling high temperatures in furnaces, which in turn facilitated the transition to iron. On the other hand, unlike copper and bronze, iron making involves a number of complicated steps. Moreover, there is considerable room for variations at each step so that we come across diverse techniques being applied to iron production. It would be wrong to assume that there was a uniform method which was adopted throughout West Asia. Different cultures made the transition to iron by traversing their own specific technological paths. Iron invariably occurs in an impure form. It has to be extracted from ores 
there are several types of iron ores with varying quantities of iron. Hematite and magnetite ores contain the highest percentage of iron but depending on the availability other ores with much lower iron content are also used to produce the metal. For extracting iron the ore should ideally be heated to over 1500 degree Celsius so that the iron melts and can then be drawn off. The melting point of iron is 1540 degree Celsius which is much higher than that of copper which is about 1100 Celsius. Initially, it was not possible to have furnaces where temperatures of over 1500 Celsius could be obtained. Nevertheless, it is technically possible to procure small quantities of somewhat impure iron even at much lower temperatures. Two further processes are necessary to make the iron economically useful. These two processes are carburization and tempering. When iron is brought in contact with carbon while it is hot, it undergoes physical changes to become steel. Tempering refers to fast cooling of the iron which has absorbed carbon. Carburization and tempering enable iron to acquire hardness and strength. This renders it a superior metal for manufacturing tools and weapons. Ancient metallurgists discovered that carbon was added to iron when the metal was heated in the presence of burning charcoal. But it was only gradually that this method became popular. One of the constraints of iron technology was the need to have access to large quantities of fuel. As much as 8 tons of charcoal would have been required for carburizing 1 ton of iron. Anatolia and Syria had adequate supplies of iron ores and fuel and the original breakthrough in carburization might have been made in this region circa 1200 BCE. It was after 1200 that the new technology spread to the Eastern Mediterranean. By 1000 BCE, carburized iron was being widely used in Greece. V. Gordon Child has leveled iron as a democratic metal. This is because unlike copper, iron ores are well distributed throughout the world. The raw material could usually be procured locally and it was not necessary to rely on an elaborate trade network to obtain the ores. This is the reason for the cheapness of the metal as compared to copper and bronze. Once the technology was in place, more people would have had access to iron. It is in this sense that child calls it a democratic metal. It is not difficult to explain the rapid advance of iron in Greece. For making bronze, the Greeks had to depend wholly on imports for their supplies of copper and tin. The decline of Eastern Mediterranean trade after 1200 BCE created problems for Greek metallurgy because the supply of copper and tin could not be maintained. The introduction of iron offered a viable alternative. Since Greece had its own iron ore deposits, the Greek states with their limited resources would have preferred to use this metal rather than exchange their small surpluses for imported copper and tin. Within a short time, iron demonstrated its tremendous advantages as a metal. 
Apart from its cheapness, it could be given stronger and sharper edges for making tools and weapons. Iron was much more suitable for making swords than bronze. Iron axes were also more effective as were agricultural implements like iron plows. It should not be assumed that iron immediately ousted copper and bronze. The adoption of iron was a slow process in Mesopotamia and Egypt. In Mesopotamia, the Iron Age began after 800 BCE and in Egypt more than a century later. In most of West Asia, iron and bronze existed side by side for a long time. But in the context of Greece, this new technology became one of the factors which contributed to the development of productive forces after 800 BCE. So this is the end of our today's discussion. Subscribe our channel to get regular notification and follow our official Facebook page. Like our videos. For any query, feel free to mail us. For details, see the description.